All right, we're going to take a look at um, a question number one from 2007 APs, uh, from the 2007 AP test, which is about strawberries. In this particular case, it's question number one again, and the most, the biggest thing that you see right here is a, um, a, a, a dot plot. One's on top, one's on the bottom. They share the same scale. Um, title, label, label, tick, tick, tick. They sort of got it, okay? And A says, the standard deviation of ratings for the control group is 2.141. Explain how this value summarizes variability in the control group. Well, this one we should know. They give us a standard deviation, which is 2.141. We want to make sure that we recognize that it is the, um, oh, they used the word average distance. It is going to be the typical distance. All right, so the first check is for referencing that it is a typical distance from the mean discoloration um, uh, um, in the control group. Okay, so um, it's the typical distance from the mean discoloration um, to a um, actual, I guess, discoloration um, rating. Okay, so it's the typical distance. In this particular case, um, you're going to go one check for making sure that it is going to be a typical distance, all right? And then we have to generalize, generalize what that typical distance is. It's from the mean second check, all right? So this one is worth two points. My person got one out of two, all right? So um, when you're working with quantitative data, the standard deviation is the typical distance between a value for whatever it is, which in this case the discoloration rating is, from its mean. All right, so moving on to the next part B. All right, and let's take a look at that. And this is based on the dot plots, comment on the effectiveness of the preservative and lowering the amount of discoloration. No calculations necessary. You can sort of eyeball it just a little bit. Um, but the first thing that you have to um, um, identify is um, answering the question, um, is it effective? And the answer is yes, it is effective. And they said it is fairly effective, so I'm going to check. So that is the answer, but you have to make sure that you talk about it based on the dot plots. So what do you see in the dot plots that makes you think that it was effective? And probably the best answer for this, statistically speaking, is to address the, the measure of center. It's not asking you to cuss about the whole thing. It's to recognize that the center for the control group is actually higher than for the treatment group. So if the center is higher for the control, it is actually more discolored. And therefore, we can see that the, the, um, the treatment, whatever that is, is a, the preservative that you're using, is helping to um, control the discoloration in those strawberries. So what I'm looking for here is, all right, making sure you address the concept of the center. The center for the control group is higher than that of the treatment group. And so in this particular person, they identified a mean. So, oh my goodness, they actually typed these into the calculator. But guys, you can actually, in this case, it says no calculations necessary, okay? I would go ahead and um, be specific. I would commit to a number for the discoloration rating. Um, and I would say that the discoloration rating for um, um, the treatment group is about five um, discoloration rating units, which is less than that for the control group, which is about 6.5 um, rating. Okay, so making sure that you compare the centers using a math comparison word, you're going to get um, that justification credit there. And the last thing here is, do you have context? Do you talk about preservatives, strawberries, discoloration ratings? This person does. So that means my person got three out of three on this particular problem. Okay. Now, they went and did mean here, and then they did medians down here. You don't have to do them both. Either one is going to be fine. Generically talking about the middles or the centers is going to be fine too. But make sure you commit to a number. Make sure you wiggle the number. And make sure you have units behind the number. And then you're most likely going to get full credit for that particular problem. The last part, C, is about researchers decide to calculate a 95% confidence interval. And if you read through it, they actually tell you what the confidence interval is. All right, so the confidence interval, they actually tell you it also it was a, it's a one sample T confidence interval. So this is going to be 
Where's the mu? Where's the true population mean? Okay? So it says using that interval, is there going to be, or comment on whether there would be a difference? Okay? So the first check is going to be yes, there would be a difference. So there needs to be an affirmative answer for that first check. Okay? How do you know that there is a difference? Well, read through and make sure your problem, oh, zero is not within the interval. That is going to be the next check. And then looking at your answer, do you have context there? Do you talk about strawberries? Do you talk about discoloration? If you have context, give yourself your third check. And this is worth three out of three, too, or how many you got out of the three. So in this particular problem, okay, I'm going to go back. All right. This one is also worth eight points. So figure out how many out of eight that you got. Okay, put a big box around it, and that is the end for this particular question.